Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Inane Dragon. As it happened the other day, I was catching up on the mandatory Illuminati Atheist watch list of YouTube videos, seeing the latest group think that we're all required to believe and preach, when I stumbled upon this gem from Frustrated Atheist. If you take ten atheists and put them in the same room and ask them these questions, I'm pretty sure you'd get a few different answers. And he's quite right. Setting aside the insufferable straw man Salt uses to make his argument, had Salt asked atheists his questions instead of himself, he'd get a lot of different answers and a lot of interesting ones to boot. Yes, the channel name is Salt. Something to do with the Bible? I didn't ask. Frankly, I wish more theists would honestly ask questions like this of atheists. Go ahead and make it clear that you think that the answers will lead to exposing our hypocrisy. I'm sure there are hypocritical atheists, but I hasten to add, let us answer the questions, which is what I'll be doing with you here tonight. And whether you wait till I'm done or pause my video to check it out, go watch Frustrated Atheist's responses. He and I have differing ideas on a number of these, and it's only six minutes of entertainment that you would have just wasted watching Godless Cranium or Steve McRae anyways. It's not like you're missing Professor Stick or Vice Rhino here. Anyways! Let's see what questions Frustrated Atheists talking about. Today I'm going to show you that all atheists are fake. Okay. I gotta warn you away from this kind of language, man. All is a pretty broad term and a bold claim, especially when you apply it to a polysemious term like atheist. Are we talking about positive atheists who believe there are no gods? Or typical atheists as colloquially understood? those who do not accept any of the god claims with which they have been presented. Do you honestly believe you can prove that there are no honest disbelievers who simply haven't been given that compelling argument so many theists claim to have? But don't let me stop you from ramming your foot down your throat, even if you are setting yourself up to fail. Please, continue. Do you think that someday mankind, by way of science and advanced technology, will be able to do things that, by today's standards, would be considered miraculous or even impossible? If you possess enough knowledge, the impossible becomes possible. So is Mama's Boy here supposed to be your honest representation of an atheist, or would it be more accurate to say that you intend to poison the well with a ridiculous caricature? as well as strawmanning atheists by pretending that you know how all of us would answer. This is becoming a running theme on my channel. I either have to accept that apologists are criminally stupid, or are dishonest liars intentionally misrepresenting their opposition. And for better or worse, I have enough respect for you to think that you're a liar instead of an idiot. That being addressed, I hope no atheist is dumb enough to give the answer you pretend we would. The impossible, by definition, is impossible. Regardless of technology or knowledge, what may change is our understanding of what is possible, which is a subtle but key difference from your suggestion. That being said, throughout history we have fantasized about being able to do many things, even predicted it. Maybe 60, 70 years ago, we were pretty confident we'd meet Martians and Venusians. Turns out, life is currently impossible on those planets, at least complex life like we wanted to find. At the same time, many technologies and achievements we see as mind-blowing were predicted by fiction decades or centuries in advance. Submarines, the lunar landing, space stations with long-term habitation. All of this and more have been predicted, sometimes in exacting detail, by the authors of fiction. Particularly the likes of Isaac Asimov, Jules Verne, and Robert Heinlein were able to accurately guess numerous technological and scientific advances. And these authors didn't present their ideas as miraculous or impossible, but as probable or even inevitable. Was there some time when those capabilities were considered completely impossible? Sure, probably, but that's not really relevant because that attitude changed over time due to the advancing front of knowledge and science. We knew before it happened that it could be done. That's how we knew where to focus research efforts. So now that I've spent some time trying to clear up the mess of a question and answer that you've presented, let me actually answer the question. We will accomplish some things we couldn't imagine today. Most of it probably doesn't seem miraculous anymore to a thinking person, though. Traveling faster than light? Meh. We have concepts for that. Reviving the dead? 
Fuck it. We do that already in a limited sort of way. Living forever, there are serious scientific debates on precisely how to accomplish this. On the other hand, instantaneously stopping the revolution of the Earth for a day or so without harming the ecosystem or fucking with the apparent gravitational pull we experience? That will never happen. It's literally beyond the laws of physics. And we know enough now to know some hard limits in this regard. Sorry, were you looking for a simple answer that could be mocked trivially by someone who believes that we should be impressed by a man turning a little water into a little wine? Because you gave us a straw man's answer instead of actually thinking this through. The next few clips will actually be two questions, because it seems pretty clear the first question is intended to set up a gotcha situation for the second. <clears throat> Sort of a, uh, if you accept this, it's stupid that you reject that kind of a thing. If I'm wrong, I invite Salt to explain his thinking in presenting these questions as they are. Today, uh, Mars is barren and dry. Do you think it could have been covered by water in the past? Yep, it looks like it. Okay, I have another one here. Do you think it's possible the Earth could have been covered with water? In a global flood? Don't be ridiculous. See, this is what I mean by it being a setup to get the atheist to apparently contradict himself. We're supposed to act like Mars could easily have been completely covered by water while insisting that a complete covering of the Earth with water is ridiculous. But here's the thing. Even if it were true that Mars may have been covered in water, I'll address that in a moment, this would say absolutely nothing about whether or not the Earth could be completely covered in water. It certainly doesn't say anything about what happened or it happening during recorded human history without leaving a single iota of evidence that it actually happened. However, now I'm going to surprise Mr. Salt. From what I can tell about the actual data, it is more probable that the Earth was once completely covered or nearly covered in water than that Mars was. The modern models of early Earth history suggest that water covered anywhere from 95% to 100% of Earth's surface for something like the first half billion to three and a half billion years. Well before there were humans or even land animals in any significant numbers to be wiped out by a vengeful god who couldn't predict the future due to his extreme fallibility, but it still may have been the nature of the early earth. On the other hand, the models which feature the greatest possible quantity of water on Mars that I could find cap it out at about one-third coverage, far less than in Earth's ancient past, or Earth's current present. So. I have to say that I don't think Mars could have been covered by water in the past. And I do think that Earth probably was, but it would be wildly inaccurate to either call it a flood or associate it with anything out of the Bible. What's more accurate is to say that dry land hadn't yet emerged. This is closer to Genesis 1-9 than Genesis chapters 6 through 9. Still not a good fit, mind you, since there were no parting of waters or collecting of waters, but rather a slightly cooling mantle, producing greater tectonic activity, resulting in the accumulation of crustal structures that emerged from the ocean. If your Bible said something about plate tectonics and the influences of mantle temperature on land formation, we could give it some credit, but it doesn't. What were we supposed to get from these questions anyways? Like I said, I'm pretty sure I know why you asked them, but it's silly. The two planets have different histories, different amounts of tectonic activity at different times in their past. Why would the water on one be relevant to the water on the other? And how does the amount of water on either relate back to a god hurling water at the earth until the crust cracks and slaughtering all life except what could be crammed onto a boat built by just eight people? Your mythology is still ridiculous regardless. Do you think we can learn enough about brains and vocal cords that someday we can make an animal talk? Oh yeah, absolutely. Do you think then maybe Satan manipulated the serpent to speak? Uh, no, don't be ridiculous. Here you go again, presenting what you seem to think are two roughly equivalent concepts. First, let me offer better answers for your questions. Could we make animals talk? Some animals already kind of do, whether by mimicry or in rare cases with great apes we teach them sign language. Not to mention the tantalizing hints of language amongst the cetaceans. But could we take a random animal that lacks the brain structure's peripheral nerves and musculature to form coherent human speech and compel them to speak through a scientific contraption? No, not ever, in any possible world. We could use genetic manipulation to create a chimera to shame old Dr. Moreau, and it could be able to speak, sure. 
But never will we be able to just cause a snake lacking numerous brain segments, lips with complex musculature, the advanced vocal cords and muscles to speak. And even if we could do all of that, no, it doesn't make it any more credible to suggest that an immaterial evil spirit defied his infinitely more powerful, equally immaterial overlord to compel a snake to speak through literal magic resulting in the human consumption of a magical fruit against a command they couldn't comprehend, lacking the very knowledge to know they should obey God's commands because they hadn't eaten the very same fucking magic fruit yet. On the one hand, we have a scientific body of evidence which suggests we could manipulate genetics to produce a new animal capable of speaking. On the other, you have fucking magic. Stop pretending the two are anywhere close to even being similar to one another. Do you think we'll learn enough about the elements that we'll be able to turn lead into gold or make a hand out of thin air? Yes, if we learn enough, we'll be able to turn anything into anything. We'll probably never be able to do what your straw man of an atheist thinks. Anything to anything else? Not too likely. That would include violations of the first law of thermodynamics. And the only thing you'd let do that is your god. However, turning lead into gold, that's a yawn. We know of more than one method to do so by means of various different mechanisms of nuclear physics. It's just not worth doing. Cheaper by far to dig the gold out of the damn ground. Probably cheaper to finally get off of this rock and mine asteroids than to synthesize gold from lead if we're being completely honest. So why would we? As to making a hand out of thin air, that'll probably never happen either. Even if we reached the point of 3D printing biological structures, I doubt we could ever feed it thin air, as you say. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's certainly not a pragmatic solution even if the technology ever got there for us to try. Are you actually going somewhere with this? Currently, every question and the accompanying answers just seem designed to make the atheist seem as foolish as the religious, not more stupid, not less correct, just equally ignorant about reality, which is a really bad way to argue, since I'm pretty sure you've never met an atheist who would give you any of the answers that you're putting forward. So let's see if you can actually make a point with your final question. Do you think we'll ever travel to other dimensions and encounter foreign entities of different sorts, or master the smallest building blocks of all things? or even command large sections of space, like, uh, gods? Yes, even though there's no evidence for it, I have faith that the miraculous and the impossible are real. Let's start with your stupid answer. This would seem to be an attempt to mock the fact that anyone with a healthy respect for science has a positive outlook on the future, expecting us to colonize the solar system, maybe even the galaxy, which seems rather asinine in its own right for you to be doing. It's not about having faith, or about believing uncritically. We can look at what has been achieved through modern technology and the effort of scientists. We can see how a schmuck like Musk can go from making PayPal to launching a damned car into space as a joke. Now again, your atheist is like almost no atheist I can even imagine. Because most will acknowledge that we don't know if there is such a thing as other dimensions, or even if the multiverse theory is correct, that we'd be able to visit those universes. May be literally impossible to travel to other universes, dimensions, whatever you want to call them. Most of the atheists you'll see online will be honest enough to say, I don't know, when offered such a question. As to controlling the smallest particles of the universe, again, I don't know if we'll pull off that kind of control. It seems improbable, except outside very particular laboratory environments where we already do control individual particles in a manner of speaking. And last but not least, no, we will never control large portions of a galaxy like gods. This doesn't even take an atheist to recognize it won't happen. Information cannot travel faster than the speed of light. We almost certainly cannot control a solar system like a god, instantly manipulating events across light hours. Never mind controlling a galaxy like a god. And I know that with the same level of certainty that I know a god doesn't exist. It's possible that I'm wrong, but if we've even communicated instantaneously across the solar system, never mind controlling the solar system like a god, that would be something which would completely change my perception of reality. You've binned all of modern physics. Could happen, I suppose, but I'd never bet my life or my future, or even the future of the human race on it. Have I covered all of your stupid questions? Was the point supposed to be that an atheist believes on faith that a godlike beings could exist as long as it's not the god of the Bible? Because again, 
I can't imagine a real atheist answering these questions like you've suggested we would, and I think that you know that. Either you are deliberately misrepresenting atheists, or you are a complete fool. Which would you prefer me to believe? He has faith in the unseen, as long as the unseen isn't God. I need proof. Atheism is nothing more than a temper tantrum thrown at God. Atheists are completely dishonest. They will accept anything, anything miraculous and unseen, as long as it's not the Bible. The Bible is the truth. God is real. Says the guy who couldn't honestly represent his opposition at all. Wouldn't it be nice to learn, just once, what your opponents think? I've demonstrated that you either have no clue what an atheist might think, or you're a liar. Which is it? It's not as if the questions you ask could even lead to the Bible, instead of just nothing at all. There's nothing about the amount of water on Earth or Mars, nor our understanding of biology and genetics, nor the ability to use nuclear physics to alter atoms into other atoms, which suggests that the absolutely childish mythology of the Bible is any more real than the trials of Hercules. You'd be better off just not even trying, dear Mr. Salt, because you have no idea what your opposition believes. So even if you're trying to be honest, you're lying. I've got to drive this point home these days. Most of the internet apologists are demonstrating themselves to either be idiots or liars. Consider them otherwise at your own risk. I'm a named dragon, and if you've enjoyed this inanity, consider subscribing for more of the same. Rate and comment down below if you care to do so. My eternal thanks goes to those foolish enough to support me through Patreon, such as my $5 supporters of Moldy Donut, Rhea, and Yakuru. If you'd like to be separated from your money, then find the link in the description below. Thank you all, and have a good night.